you probably heard it on TV watching the game. Boos are the order of the night at Citizens Bank Park. After a four and six road trip, losing three straight coming in. They've now lost four straight. That's how the Phillies greet us and the fans coming home for their homestand. Ben Davis, Michael Barkan. This is Phillies Post Game Live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. John Cruck from the ballpark in a moment. And Ben, I thought to myself, finish this sentence. The Phillies or this team is, and the only thing I can think of right now is failing. They are failing. And we'll show you in a moment what their numbers are pre and post All-Star break. But your thoughts on what we saw tonight. Well, I think if, if you were to tell me earlier when the season started, the Phillies would be 69 and 50. 19 games over 500 on August 13th, I'd say, where do I sign up? Where do I sign up? I'm, I'm down for that. But the way they've played in the last month, I mean, it's, it's just not quality baseball. And the 42,846 people that went to see them tonight just didn't get a show whatsoever. The four hits on the night for the Phils, uh, just the one double by Rojas early on in the ball game. It's just a, it's just an offense right now that is just in a, in a quagmire. Yeah. And amidst the boos, there we were watching it there. Mm -hmm. There were bona fide cheers in those few instances where the Phillies got hits or recorded outs. The fans full throated cheered them on. They wanted more of it, and the Phillies just could not give it to them. Let's go to John Cruck. Uh, well, first, be, hang on, check this out, because I'm going to ask John about it as well, which is before and after the All Star break. Look at the record 62 and 34. As Ben said, I'll sign up for that. And even take a little bit after the break. But afterwards, 7 and 16, they've now lost four straight, but 7 and 16 since the break. Run differential, they were crushing teams, plus 110. Now it's minus 25. Batting average was 259, now 237. And the team ERA, which was among the best, if not the best in baseball, right up there, now 5.07. So both sides of the ball are really struggling mightily. Now let's check in with John Cruck and see what he has to say about a tough loss. And Johnny, certainly when you when you look at this team coming off a road trip and, and really getting walloped on the road trip, they're playing the lowly Miami Marlins and the fans are, are, are cheering them on and to not produce. I don't know what's going on with this team. I, I, I don't know what you think about it, but I'd like to hear it. Well, I... I... <laughs> Man, I wish I could I could wave a magic wand and say let's go back uh, uh, to June uh, for this team when they were playing so well. Uh, you know, you hear people talk about whether well, we've had injuries. That you know, every team has injuries. The thing is, is that right now this offense is as health, healthy as it's been all year, really. You know, uh, you know Trey went on the injured list for a while, and JT went on after the knee surgery. Bryce and Schwarber, they're all back and they're all healthy. Uh, so there's really uh, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it, but when you have as many flyouts and pop-ups uh, as you did today, it tells me that guys know that they're struggling offensively, so they're trying to, you know, I call them hero at bats. They're trying to have hero at bats where, you know, we're going to try to launch, you know, lift and separate and try to hit home runs. And, uh, you know, it's, that's not the way you come out of a slump. You know, you come out of a slump by – you know, hitting hitting hard line drive somewhere, and you know besides uh, Johan Rojas double and Nick's double, uh, you know JT hit a ball hard to left field, but uh, of their hits, uh, of their four hits, you know they they're just you know they're just not hitting balls off the barrel and hitting balls on the line. They they need to get back to that. Uh, you know we we made we were so we credited them so much when they were scoring a bunch of runs. And they didn't have to hit home runs because they were, you know, stacking hits, two or three hits an inning, scoring a couple runs, you know, in, in, you know, the first inning, the third inning, the fifth inning, whatever. And it's just not happening right now. And, uh, you know, I think that I think that this this offense needs to go right back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, watch their at bats tonight, especially and see, you know, what what they're doing wrong and try. It, they, it has to be corrected at some point soon. Because this fan base is, uh, they ain't real happy. Johnny, you look at Taiwan Walker's numbers, just 58% strikes uh, on the evening. And, and the fans let him have it a little bit tonight. What did you see out of him? It, for me, it just didn't seem like he had a lot of finish on his pitches tonight. He did. No, Ben, he did not. And, uh, 
you know, he, he threw a couple good splits. He has to have his split finger. You know, let, let's be honest. You know, you got to get ahead of these hitters. And if you have a pitch like Taiwan split, you have to be able to finish guys with his split. And he was bouncing that thing uh, quite a bit. And, um, you know, it just didn't even look like a strike out of his hand. So the Marlins hitters could just take it and work their way ahead and counts and, and, and pick a pitch to hit. And, um, you know, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm so – I don't want to call it depressed, but, I mean, this is tough to watch right now with this team. But, uh, you know, look, if, if Taiwan can figure this thing out, uh, Ranger comes back next week, and, and hopefully they're back at full strength when uh, Spencer Turnbull comes back. But, um, you know, they, Taiwan has to be – if he's going to be in this rotation, and he's going to be – uh, you know, he, he has to be able to put hitters away, and he couldn't do that today. He sure couldn't, John, and I, I wonder whether or not he will be in this rotation. Forget about the long haul for the short haul. Here's a guy who was out with blister issues since June 21st, and you figured he got everything together tonight, and he let in those two runs in the first inning, and you mentioned the fans. Man, they let him have it, and they let him have it throughout his start tonight when they felt that he was – falling far from the standard and we all know what that is come on man we're giving you 18 mil per season let's see something <laughs> and he was unable to fulfill that so um, what would you say to you're so connected to this city you played here and the fans connect with you what would you say to the fans who are pulling their hair out and saying they're not coming back from this John there's no way they <laughs> might win a couple of games here and there but 7 and 16 after the all-star break and a 5 nothing loss to the stinking and I mean stinking Miami Marlins means they got big trouble ahead uh, um, appease them if you would well I see this thing in two ways I see it one as a fan I'm a fan of this team I'm a fan of the Phillies organization um, Thank God I can't play anymore. I'm done with that. But um, I look at it as a fan, and I understand the fan, these the, the Phillies fans, because, like, I'll watch them play one game, and if they don't play well, I'm like, ah, oh, this team's done. You know, and then the next day they might score, you know, eight runs, and then you're like, ah, oh, this is the best team in baseball. Um, but right now they're not the best team in baseball, and right now, uh, you know, the way their record has been since the All-Star break, you know, you, you thank goodness they built up a big lead. And thank goodness we talked about them building up a big lead because it's shrinking. And, yeah. you know, luckily, luckily the Braves and the Mets have been inconsistent and, you know, keeping this gap, you know, not not a huge gap like it was, you know, two months ago. But, uh, you know, they still have this gap. And so now I look at it as a, as a former player, as a player and as a player. I keep reminding my, I have to keep reminding myself it's going to change. It's going to change. We have to trust, um, you know, are they as good as they were when they were at their best? No. Are they as bad as they are right now? No. So they, they have to find a happy medium. And, you know, look, if they'd have played 500 on the road this last road trip, if they'd have won that last game in Arizona, play 500, you know, they still have a chance, uh, you know, the next five games of this homestand, they still have a chance to do damage on this homestand. But, man, the way it went started today, man, I, I don't know. I, I, You know, I can't say that, yeah, tomorrow's the day they're going to break out of this thing because who knows? Who knows? Uh, hope, hopefully uh, it will be one of those days tomorrow that you just spoke of where they get the eight runs tomorrow and they win. You got that right, my friend. All right, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you so much. We'll All talk right. to you tomorrow. John Crook. Post -game I hope it's under booth. better circumstances. Me, I'm with you there. Me too. Me too. At least we have our humor. If we got nothing, we don't have wins. We got some humor here. Inside the box score, Schwarber not a hit. Turner had an error as well. Harper one for four. Alec Bohm, nope. Bryson Stott, I mean, he, his season, we can talk about that for a whole program. It has been a struggle. We talked as we were watching the game. Uh, Nick Castellanos one for three. JT with an error. Brandon Marsh, 0 for 3. Johan Rojas, 1 for 2. Average is better than Bryson Stotts. What's Topper have to say about this loss upon the beginning of the homestand? Here he is post game. Yeah, 
Yeah, a lot of fly ball outs, a lot of pop outs. Um, kept us off balance. We hadn't seen them before, but um, that's not an excuse. We've got to get back to line drives, pass the baton, use the field, get good pitches to hit. Uh, no, not really in the first inning, but that was, you know, um, that was the problem in the first inning is the two walks. I mean, they really didn't hit a ball hard in the first inning. Um, I thought he was really good in the second. Um, gives up a home run to Berger in the third, who's hit 12 home runs since the break or something like that. And I thought he was better in the fourth again. So, uh, the velocity was up, touch 93. I thought the, the split had a lot of bottom to it, not a whole, whole lot of hard contact to it, and he threw it a lot, so that was good to see. Do you attribute it to maybe rust in that first inning command-wise or um, just having not pitched in this environment for a while? Uh, what do you think it was? I think it's probably that. You know, Not not the rust because he, he's just been pitching, but maybe just in this environment and uh, trying to get a feel for the mound again. But, um, you know, but I thought overall it was fine. It's been a pretty Well, just because we've been through this before, maybe not this prolonged, but you look at the numbers on the back of the baseball cards, I always bring that up. I believe in this team. They're resilient. They're tough. They care. Um, I think we're, I know we're going to turn around. I'm getting close. I am. But, um, We'll see you tomorrow. Dodd didn't get the outcomes you were looking for, but he squared the ball up pretty yeah. well. Is that bad? Do you feel confident with him in the five slot moving forward? Yeah, because he's he's back to making contact, and, and I thought his bats were good, and I just missed a couple of home runs. Um, took some pitches. I, I thought his yeah, I thought his bats were good. You haven't really been much of a, I think, a team meeting kind of guy since you've been here. I mean, is there anything you need to do on, on that end? Gather them together, talk to them. Yeah, I'll think about it, but I mean, I think about it all the time, you know. Is it time to do it? Um, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the attitude and, and where I think our, uh, the guys' minds are at. And um, I think overall, they're very solid right now. Um, they're frustrated, you know, because they know that we're better than that. And, and our fans know that we're better than that. And we have very knowledgeable fans, and, and they let you know when you're not playing well. And, hey, that's, it is what it is. That's the game. Does Marsh have to make more contact for you to keep putting him in your lineup right now? He needs to make more contact for sure. You had said at one point um, that the relief pitcher struggling was a little bit contagious. Can that happen sometimes with team defense at all? Oh, I think I think with anything, well, offense, defense, starting pitching, relief pitching, I think it can get contagious. I think it can get get contagious the other way too, in a good way. Um, but I thought our relievers were a lot better tonight. Hoffman threw the ball well. He executed. Kirkering did the same. Ruiz has thrown the ball extremely well lately. So um, you know, maybe that's a trending. Do you think with uh, defensive mistakes, it's something where some extra work would help, or more of a mental? Well, I'm not sure how much more work we can do because those guys go out there and they work as hard as anybody every single day. They get their round ball work. Outfielders are working every day on, on their fundamentals. Um, catchers throwing the bases, they do that a lot. Um, so I'm not sure if we can do any more work, but uh, we just got to take care of the baseball and focus and concentrate and, and believe in yourself. When you do your check-ins with, especially a lot of your veterans, What's the sense of the mood that you get from them? Anything different at this point than maybe, you know, even coming out of like Seattle or like earlier during the stretch? Um, yeah, there's more frustration for sure. You know, and I thought when we went into Seattle, I th from Seattle, um, L.A., first game in Arizona, um, I thought we played pretty well. And um, now the last the last four haven't been as good. So we gotta we gotta turn around and play better.
The understatement of the night, we've got to turn it around and play better, says Rob Thompson. Ben, I don't know if you'll agree with me on this, but Rob Thompson, from the moment he became interim manager and then manager, this team started to win. And almost overwhelmingly, it has won under his tenure. Now it is sputtering big time, and for the first time, he is lacking Topper that resolve, almost the quiet defiance that we always see. He's never really concerned about what's going to happen because he knows his guys are going to come back and get him. I'm, I'm missing that from him tonight. I don't know what you think about I, I would that. agree with you, Michael. I think he has a look of concern on his face this, tonight, and, and as well he should. There's a ball club that is sputtering right now, and, and you can say all the right things, but the bottom line is going through something like this and, and having to, to look you know, your teammates in the eye and, and, and tell, you, tell each other, hey, we're going to snap out of this. When it's going as badly as it is right now, that's not easy to say, and it's not easy to believe because of how it is sputtering right now. And for this lineup to get four hits, four hits and just one double that, that Rojas chopped down the line, it's just, you know, I, I, I would agree that Bryson Stott, he looked a lot better tonight, although he had nothing to show for it. Uh, but it's just the approach, and it's just you, you can't go up there and try and hit an eight-run homer every time up. It's not going to happen. It never will happen. It's a record that will never be broken, Michael. You can't do it. But it just seems that way, and that's what you're seeing with a lot of fly balls and a lot of uh, – I mean, Bayazo had four swings and misses tonight. Four. Yeah. Four. And nothing against the kid. You know, it was his fifth start tonight, his ERA down at 2.28. But the guy was averaging 90-91 with his fastball. And this is a guy that you're thinking, the Phillies are just going to torch this guy. Just, just going to light thought. him up like a Christmas tree. It did happen. It did not happen. He went through this lineup seven innings like it was like a hot knife through butter.